Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome back to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kira Mack, as always, and delighted and excited that you've been able to tune in with us yet again for another show. Now, before we do get into the top stories trending here in Thailand today, don't forget to like and subscribe to the video and channel. And also, please do hit the notification bell that's beside the subscribe button so that YouTube will let you know when the next Thai Expat Daily Show is uploaded onto the platform. Now, if you like listening to us on a podcast player, there's a link down below in the description where the available podcast players can be found and finally if you like this show if you want to support the show you can do so by looking down below in the link in the description to buymeacoffee.com so now that's all done and dusted let's jump into those trending stories today and of course, today has been an immense day here in Thailand with the news that Taksin Shinawatra has returned to Thailand. And we have a new prime minister. So we're going to jump into the news about the prime minister first, because that is a lot more important than an old man returning to Thailand to get preferential treatment. Nevertheless, Sareta Tavasim becomes the 30th prime minister of Thailand. Former real estate tycoon Sareta Tavasin has been selected as the 30th Prime Minister of Thailand on Tuesday after having received overwhelming support from members of Parliament and Senators in a joint sitting. The final tally was 480 in favour, 165 against and 81 abstentions from the combined 747 MPs and Senators participating. Sareta 60 is one of the Puatai's party's three ministerial candidates, which also included Peitong Tarn Shinawatra and Chayaksim Nitsari. Sarata waited at Puatai headquarters for the final result of the vote because he is not an MP. Sarata is a former president and chief executive of real estate developer Sansiri PLC, the second largest real estate company in Thailand. During the campaign ahead of the May general election, Sarata pledged repeatedly that he would never partner with either of the Palang Pracharat or United Thai Nation parties. Puatai as the core party in government forming coalition were however in desperate need of as many votes in the house as possible so it has had to renege on those election promises and has welcomed both parties yes both parties into the coalition. Sareta said I made the pledge on the expectation that the Puatai party would win a landslide victory but it didn't and the political mathematics have changed as a result. He tried to explain that he had not lied to the people saying that the party had worked in opposition for the past nine years and the people's standard of living dropped so it's necessary to forget what we said. With no political experience at all Sareta once said he had no preconditions for accepting the nomination but the country must come first. Today many people are concerned about the economy and the inequality he said adding that in his article headline Thailand this is our future that Thailand needs to create hope and inspiration for young people. Born on February 15th 1963 Sareta received a master's in business administration from Claremont Graduate University in the US. He began his career as an assistant product manager at a consumer goods giant PNG Thailand before moving into the real estate sector. He is married to Dr. Pak Palai Tavasin, a specialist in anti-aging medicine. They have three children. According to Wikipedia, Sansiri was founded in 1984 as the holding company to manage the assets of the Chuk Chako family before merging with the Lam Sam family company in 1994. The company has been listed on the Thai Stock Exchange since 1996. So there it is. The new prime minister has finally been uh, has finally been accepted by the parliament. Peter Lim Janarat, of course, was rejected in the first round of voting, and uh, this is what we got now because he joined hands with the uncle parties, you know, uh, the PPRP, and then the uh, Priot party. He's joined hands with them even after Puatai said they would never go into a coalition government with them. Their excuses are quite weak. As we know from today's events with Taksin Shinawatra returning to Thailand, it is obvious this is all part of a plan to get him to come back. Deals have been done. And I think at this stage of events, they, they've sold out the Thai people. And the Thai people asked for change here in the country. They didn't ask for the same old, same old. And instead, what Pua Thai have done, have betrayed the trust of the people by entering into government and breaking their pre-election promises. And it will come back to haunt them. A number of Pua Thai MPs have already resigned because they said they will not 
be in government with these people. They uh, Some of the former red shirt leaders who are members of Puatai have also resigned. So there is a lot of people very, very unhappy with what they have done. And I have a feeling in the next election, whenever that may be, and even I, I don't even know if this government can survive, there will be, I think, a huge downgrade in votes for them over the next couple of years. I, I do feel that they have betrayed the vote of the people and probably the trust of the people. And the more this process has gone on over the last couple of months, you have seen their shift and their and the influence that Taksin Shinawatra has had on all of this as well. And of course, Shinawatra arriving today in Thailand, the day of the Prime Minister vote for a Pua Thai candidate. It's all not, it's not by accident. This has all been orchestrated. And this is what we've been left with. But nevertheless, I do hope that he, you know, has some form of power when he gets into government, that he's able to get things done. Because the, the people that are suffering are the Thai people. And they do need a government that is going to work for them, work for the Thai people to increase and make better the standard of living here in the country and put more money into the pocket of Thai people. But nevertheless, it's going to be a long drawn out process over time. We'll see how this government does and what policies they bring in. But nevertheless, let's go into the second trending story, of course, and that is the return of Taksin Shinawatra, who arrived at Don Muang Airport this morning at approximately 9 a.m. Lots of fanfare. I didn't see him in handcuffs at all. Apparently he rolled up. He was greeted. He was outside whying everybody. I mean, it was just like a, a circus there. And, and yet there was no sign of him in any handcuffs. A fugitive who had absconded from the law, who was wanted in Thailand for many, many years. And he seems to have been just welcomed back. But nevertheless, he was then taken to the Supreme Court and uh, he's been given an eight-year term and taken to prison. So let's just go through that uh, firstly. So Taksin Shinawatra has begun serving his eight-year prison sentence after appearing at the Supreme Court on Tuesday morning following his return to the country after 15 years abroad. The Corrections Department confirmed that the 74-year-old former Prime Minister had arrived in Bangkok Remand Prison and has been admitted to its hospital unit in light of his old age and underlying illnesses. The Supreme Court's Criminal Division for Holders of Political Positions earlier ordered Taksin jailed for eight years, three years concurrently in the first two cases and five years in the third case. Taksin was brought from Don Wong Airport to the Supreme Court shortly after 10 a.m. Many red shirt supporters lined the streets near Sanam Luang as he was taken into the court building. Inside, immigration police told the court that Taksin was a convict in three finalized cases and he was wanted on arrest warrants. In one case, Taksin had been sentenced in abstantia to three years in prison for having conflict of interest in the Export-Import Bank of Thailand loan case. The case involved the lending of 4 billion baht to the government of Myanmar in 2004. The court said Taksin had ordered the state-run bank to lend 4 billion baht at a below-cost interest rate to Myanmar so it could buy products from Shin Satellite PLC, a company owned by his family. No corruption there, of course. In another case, the court sentenced him to two years in jail for illegally launching a two- and three-digit lottery between 2003 and 2006. He was found guilty of breaching the criminal code for abusing his power as the scheme was not supported by any legislation. And the court said on Tuesday that the jail term in these two cases would start simultaneously in the next three years. In the other case, the court earlier sentenced Taxon to five years for malfeasance in connection with the holding of a telephone concessionary and conflict of interest from 2001 to 2006 during his two terms as Prime Minister. He was charged then with violating the Organic Act on counter-corruption by holding shares in Shin Corp through proxies. The Act prohibits a government official from holding shares in a contractor of the state. Shin Corp, through its subsidiaries, obtained mobile phone concessions from two state telecom agencies. So yeah, that's what he was convicted for. He was then brought to prison and he has his own private room at the moment. Okay, private room. Uh, he apparently has four or five very serious, serious conditions. So he's had to have his own private room in the hospital. And he'd be allowed to have visitors every day and they have to set up a special room for him because, you know, he's, you know, he's very special. And, uh, you know, he didn't have to get his hair cut, the convict hair cut, because he said his hair was short enough, so no need for that. So you can see he's been treated like every other prisoner that would go in there of course one might wonder you know this illness he you know he's four or five illnesses they said you know and that he you know he had to be admitted for a private room in the remand prison medical hospital and one would make you think that such a, a man with such conditions wouldn't be too quick to turn himself in for an eight-year prison sentence. Indeed, over the last few months, we've seen him flying from Dubai to Hong Kong to Cambodia and all around the world. Seemed perfect. Lots of pictures, 
with his daughter and his sister and his sons. He seemed to have no problem getting around when he was in Dubai, as I said, or in Hong Kong or Cambodia. He was only at a birthday party a few weeks ago. But suddenly he gets to Thailand and, wow, we're going to have to put him up in the a medical the medical unit and he left his own room and you know because he's very sick he's very sick he didn't look sick now in the last few weeks but suddenly he hits thailand he's very very sick of course this all stinks of corruption and a deal being done to let him come back to thailand now the next thing what will happen next is he's probably going to apply for a royal pardon i mean if he spends a week in prison i'd be shocked right and if he gets his royal pardon then he'll be out and free and that's it of course if he doesn't get his royal pardon after applying for it he has to wait two years and then he can apply again for a royal pardon that's the rules and laws in the country there he cannot be overridden by anybody here so that is how it works it would be hilarious if he went into prison and he didn't get his royal pardon could you imagine that they'd be all out in the streets protesting then finally they'd, that would get them out but nevertheless today is it's an interesting that he did turn up today because you know, it it was the prime ministerial vote and it seemed like he didn't want the, the light to be on that. You know, Sareta Tavazim becoming the 30th prime minister. No, 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 that can't happen. He can't be the most important person today. I, Taksin Shinawatra, should be the most important person today. It has to be always about me. And that's the way he's been for the last 15 to 16 years he's been abroad. It's all about him. He's been persecuted. You know, oh, these charges are politically motivated. They may be somewhat politically motivated, let's say, right? But if you did break the law in the cases and you did do what the court convicted you of doing, calling them politically motivated is just a cop-out. I've never heard him say that I didn't do what I was convicted of doing. And there's more cases pending, by the way, for this guy. So, look, I'll be honest. I'm not a fan of Taksin Shinawatra. I'm not a fan of Prayat and Prawit and all these guys. I feel they are the people that are holding this country back from achieving great things. And I think the Thai people deserve a lot better than Taksin Shinawatra and Prayat and Prawit and all these guys that cling on to power in this country. I believe that Thailand need new leaders and people with forward thinking and people who want to get this country up and running again, but want to bring it into the at least 21st century. And I don't believe this guy has ever had Thailand best interests at heart. But nevertheless, that's just my opinion. I'd love to know what you think about that all down below in the comment section. Now, if you ever wanted to get Thai people, right, to protest, okay, and you think to yourself, you know, they've had the election stolen from them in essence with what's gone on with the Move Forward Party and everything. I found a way to get people out in the street. Facebook in Thailand threatened with closure. Now, I think if you close Facebook in Thailand, I reckon you'd get people protesting big time. The Thai authorities will seek a court order to shut down the Facebook platform in the country because they claim that the social media service has accepted advertising fees from fake investment scams which have allegedly cheated more than 200,000 Thais. The estimated damage could be as much as 10 billion baht, said Digital Economy and Society Minister Chaiwood Tanakapasorn. Thai authorities have raised the issue with Facebook many times, asking it to screen for fake advertisements on its platform. It has, however, failed to help us in tackling the scams, the minister said. Therefore, the Thai authorities intend to go to court to get the platform closed in Thailand within seven days, he said, during a press briefing. Also at the press conference were Katachai Pitasoan, Acting General Secretary of the Security and Exchange Commission, and among some other big wigs, of course. If Facebook wishes to continue doing business here in Thailand, it must take more responsibility in this matter, Chai Wood said. According to the ministry, some scammers claim to be listed companies and displaying the Securities and Exchange Commission logo, placed advertisements on Facebook and convinced people to invest with them with promise of high returns. The people who fell for the fake advertising never received the money promised. Of course they never received the money promised. It was fake advertising. Though I have seen fake advertising on many legitimate websites here and it's not been taken down by those websites. I'm not going to name the names of media organizations here. But I recently saw an advertisement for some miracle hair growth on a very popular news site that I might get news from on occasion with the picture of the the, the soon-to-be prime minister and i hardly think he's been advertising that so i mean we can blame facebook for some things but we can't blame facebook for everything but nevertheless i i, I think planning and trying to shut down facebook would be i mean this is that's junta era time like 2014 coup time 
if we're going to try shut down Facebook so that people can't use it because we don't like what's being said on it. Again, I do think a lot of these scams that you see on Facebook are fairly, I mean, I'm not going to say, I mean, they're easy to, they're easy to spot and people do. Yes, there are gullible people out. And just because you think you're going to block Facebook and then the scams will stop, that's not going to stop scams. They'll find just a new way to do it. So the idea is not just to block Facebook, but to educate people on scams and what to look out for. And to think to yourself, if something is looks too good to be true, then it probably is too good to be true. And it's probably then a scam. And a little bit of education, I think, would work wonders in this rather than threatening to shut down Facebook. But as I say, if you do shut down Facebook, expect you're going to have a very negative reaction from, let's say, well, the people of your country who love Facebook here in Thailand. And I would say most people in Thailand have Facebook and use it all the time. Now we'll move on to our final story of today. Now, remember I brought you a story a few days ago about how in Phuket they were checking all the weed shops on Bangla Road. Well, there was a legitimate reason that wasn't mentioned in the article. So we're going to have a look at it now. American with weed blower spurs Bangla checks. A foreign man offering people to be doused with a cloud of marijuana smoke on Bangla Road is what prompted the cannabis checks on the popular party street in Patong. Phuket Provincial Police have explained. Officials learned of the man's antics only after photos were posted on social media, prompting police and officers from the Phuket Provincial Health Office to conduct the checks on Bangla Road last Friday night. Some 20 officers led by Patong Police Chief Colonel Sam Porn began their checks after 10.30pm. Joining the police contingent was the Katu District Deputy Chief and a group of his volunteers. Several venues on Bangla Road were inspected to check for correct licenses to permit the sale of controlled herbs and to ensure there are no sales were being made to people under the age of 20, minors or pregnant women. Now, after all this, no violations were found. However, officers failed to find the man wanted for using his weed blower to infuse people with a cloud of cannabis smoke. Officers checked CCTV and later confirmed that the man was an American national, Ankan Varak Ching, that's some name, who arrived in Thailand at Swanapum Airport on August 15th. He was staying at a hotel on Bangla Road. Ching confessed that the purpose was to create promotional material for selling marijuana in other countries, and he was not aware the wrongness of his actions, police said. He said he felt sorry for the unintended harm done to Phuket's image as a tourist destination and decided to make a video apology, provincial police continued. Patong police later confirmed that he left Phuket on VJet Flight VZ310 on Saturday. In response to the incident, local authorities have taken steps to ensure proper follow-through. The Patong Police Superintendent issued notification to both the Immigration Office and the Phuket Provincial Public Health Office, directing them to take appropriate actions within their respective spheres of authority, the Provincial Police Statement said. So apparently it was all down to a fellow with like, it looks like one, I can't describe, it looks like one of those water guns, right? And apparently it was pumping out weed smoke which is quite funny actually but this was the reason they were investigating all these shops now they're probably wondering where he got the weed from and how he's able to do this so possibly that's why it it brought the spotlight onto these shops but yeah nevertheless i don't think you're buying one of those machines. i'd say it's something you brought into the country to be honest but yeah this is the kind of silly stupid stuff that tourists do in this country without knowing the rules and regulations without understanding the type of country they're coming to at times and he's lucky he got out he's lucky that that's all that happened to him was a bit of a kind of a talking to and make an apology video because the truth is but then again where is the law behind this and what if he was to be prosecuted under the law what would he be prosecuted for because the law is so vague and the fact there is no real law regarding marijuana here in thailand i mean i don't think they could have done very much apart from you know what they got out of him but nevertheless that's it for today folks hope you enjoyed the show the finally the calamity of forming a government seems to be over here in thailand and tax and shinawatra has turned back up i mean the news will be getting pretty quiet after this i reckon but you know what i always find that in thailand when you think the news is about to get quiet that's when things kick off anyway folks that's it for today have a great day and do stay safe but ultimately, with this story or anything else that stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Because yes, this is a new show, but it's also a conversation. Now keep that conversation going. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, and do all the good stuff that does help that YouTube algorithm. But ultimately, my name is Kieran Mack. You've been listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show, and we will see you next time.